First, we're going to start with setting up the case. We used uh, uh, Pontic Wax Up and Yes Design Digitally. Well, we already started, but then I decided, hey, this is a cool video to show you guys. Um, basically, we just add two random teeth and uh, we do the uh, virtual wax up bottom. We're going to kind of align it where we want to see a little bit of the cervical and um, well basically the cervical both sides so it has a nice and easy uh, uh, insertion once you kinda get that down um, you just hit next let it calculate and you can kinda see the little marks on the sides so that's a, this, those are gonna be the undercuts um, that will be uh, that will be kinda blocked out um, now we're gonna choose the teeth um, basically we set it up as two teeth um, side by side because when you kind of separate them um, it, it gets a little bit weird um, so you're going to see right now what I'm going to do so that right now our focus we want to do a gingival reduction on the two laterals so for that we just basically changed um, the, 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 the central for a lateral um, this is uh, something that um, you can just hit um, right click, change the tooth models, and you can change it to whatever tooth you want. The only thing is that sometimes it's a little bit mirrored. There is a way to uh, fix that uh, mirroring where you can actually mirror that tooth. It's just a little bit extra t extra steps. And I would gladly um, show you guys in the future in another video how to do that. It's a cool way. I basically um, I'm tricking ExoCAD into thinking it's two teeth side by side because when you do the um, the, the the next steps, um, it can kind of trick it. It will kind of trip out if you um, actually call them um, the two the the, the two uh, laterals. Do you want to trick it? thinking it's side, uh, just side by side. So right now what I'm doing is basically I'm just planning out how I want um, the gingiva to look. Now this is an easy way we can do it. Um, there's a little bit uh, more uh, fancier way to do it but um, it, it involves a little bit more work in, including a, a CBCT or an actual uh, bone segmentation. That way you can actually plan it out perfectly. Um, but if you or the doctor has already said, oh, we want to do two millimeter or however much uh, re gingival reduction, well, this is the way to do it. So right now I'm just setting up the teeth so I can have a beautiful gingiva. That's all I'm, I'm focusing on. I'm not focusing exactly on tooth. If you are focusing on tooth, well, there. That, that would be a, a little extra video so you, can actually, so you can actually do a wax up a proper wax up with uh, including the gingival reduction right now I'm just uh, free forming uh, I really love the free form in the tooth placement um, part of ExoCAD uh, just because it, it, it maintains the uh, the anatomy of the tooth so much more better than when you do it um, in the actual freeform stage. So this is actually a little, cool little trick. You just uh, when you do the tooth placement, you just go to advanced and hit the little thing that looks like a like a um, like a freeform. It's a third option. Yeah, you just press it right there. So right now I'm just fo focusing on the gingival heights. Usually you want the gingival height of the, uh, the laterals um, a millimeter or a little bit less than uh, the centrals and the canine. You don't want them to be. You don't want that uh, gingival height to be so much higher than that, right? Or too low. So kind of in between. Usually it's a millimeter, a little bit less. 
It also depends on what the doctor is suggesting. Or if you're doing it, well, you can decide how much uh, gingival reduction you want. Okay, so this is where we start tricking also the, the program. Um, obviously, there is no module for gingival um, reduction. Pe people can do it in um, bite splints. They can do it in different, different things, but I think this is the easiest. Um, so what I'm doing, I'm basically in the freeform stage, in the, um, the anatomic portion, uh, you can go all the way down where it says paint and pull. In that option, I usually just go to advanced and I paint everything. So everything that's green is going to move um, without distorting it. Everything in yellow, it will kind of stretch out the SDL or, uh, or the model. So it doesn't really look that great. So I'm kind of blocking out only the areas that I don't want it stretched out. So that's why I chose that little design right there. Next, I'm going to pull the actual tooth and actually pull it out quite a bit. kind of want to be perpendicular um, to the tooth. You don't, want, you don't really want to be angled. Um, just so it can be a little bit more, um, more precise. So you do the same thing to the other tooth. Stretch it out again. Try to keep it as straight as possible. Now, th th there is a lot of like stretch marks. Uh, you can kind of see it's stretching. Um, not to worry, we're, we're actually going to fix that in a later stage. Actually, probably in that same stage. You, you would just go to free and, um, and just smooth it just a little bit, maintaining the, the, the same anatomy that, that you want. See, like right now. I'm smoothing it, smoothing it, so it can be a nice, uh, a nice shape for the gingiva. These teeth are actually going to be the cutout um, models for your gingival um, reduction guide, gingivectomy guide. Smoothing it, smoothing it till it looks very nice. Basically, what I want the gingival to look like. There are quite a few videos on this. Um, I haven't really seen one like this exactly. Um, I just thought it was really cool, easy, uh, to actually do it like this. Um, it doesn't involve you moving through different modules and stuff like that. So the whole reason why I did it, um, the initial setup as, to, uh, as a central and a lateral is because it won't let you do exactly um, the next steps. So right now, I, I just uh, deleted or made, it, made invisible everything else and only kept the teeth visible. I press the outside, like where all the grid is on the space, right click and actually save whatever's there. Um, I usually click on default saving. See, this is the step I was talking about. Um, it's going to let you do a single gingival um, 
uh, gingival base design. If you separated them initially, it's going to tell you, oh, you have to do it uh, separate. So uh, it will, will kind of mess up. Basically, just draw how you want the the gingival base uh, to look like, how far you want it to reach. So, right now, X gets thinking, "Oh, you just want gingiva on it." But no, nope, we're actually going to make a guide from that gingiva design. Actually, this uh, this type of method um, was really inspired by um, by Corey Glenn. Um, he, he came to a mission trip in uh, Mexico Puebla, um, had a f quite a few minutes to actually um, see how it works, and um, he he made a complete denture just using basically these kind of steps. Um, so that got me thinking into like different things. Cause that's the cool thing about Exocad. Yeah, you just get a few, few ideas from someone, and from there you can start imagining stuff. So here I'm just changing a few things. Didn't like how it looked. You can always hit um, that button again to recalculate the the gingiva so it can appear again. So right now you can actually um, freeform the gingiva. If you want to smooth it, you can leave it really smooth in that stage. Um, this is just a just a simple guide. You're not really looking for aesthetics. So you, see how it looks now? It looks really weird, right? So you're actually going to finish the thing, and then you're going to hit freeform. Um, freeform the merge part. So now what I'm going to do is basically reduce that big bump that appeared, right? Looks really weird. So you want to reduce it just so it doesn't have that many problems um, for the next stage. You want to reduce it basically to almost like nothing, like a, there is no sign of uh, that weird tooth there. In the next steps, you're actually going to hit um, attachments. You're going to see. Um, this is something that uh, Fu taught us. Uh, this is a, um, one of our first like uh, persons that actually taught us how to use um, ExoCAD. Um, I figured this attachment thing to actually cut out little holes in it. Um, so from that little knowledge, it's like, oh, I can grab a certain shape, which would be my teeth, and punch out a hole, which would be that design of my teeth. So I basically look for my design. You can see those little little nubs, those little shoes or whatever, they look like clogs. Um, you search for it. Don't rotate so it appears perfectly where you want it. Hit that button. Allow all changes. Apply. If you don't, you'll have a few problems. Um, and then, bam, look at that. It's a perfect cutout of your uh, STLs that you saved. From here, um, I just want I just want to make it a little bit more fancy. I want to make um, little windows to actually verify how it seats in the mouth, right? And this little idea was kind of inspired on the from the Blue Sky uh, Blue Sky Bio software, um, where you make little holes, little windows to verify that your um, 
your implant guide seats perfectly. You basically just want a random shape that's a little bit um, long that reaches all the way to the tooth and just just hit apply again. You can put it in the central, uh, in the middle of the tooth, you can put it in between two teeth just so you can kind of verify um, that the seating it's your decision where you put where you place them or or not. See, like right now, I'm putting it in between two teeth, but I think with this one, I didn't go as deep. Oh, look, look, yeah, yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, so I, I, I did the, I fixed the height. Try to make it a little bit uh, longer. See how I put it transparent, actually changing the height. See how it looks. <laughs> For some reason, it wasn't changing the height when I was moving it. So I had to physically put it in a little bit deeper which is no problem you should apply I think I still missed a, a little spot right there but I mean it's not going to be that big, big of a problem when it prints same thing right now I'm just having fun with it um, you can easily just have like one and it'll, and it'll test out your um, your seating perfectly just with one but I was just having fun now this is a cool one uh, is it this one no oh yeah yeah this this little thing I, I recently just found out, found out about it um, this is a really cool thing that that, um, that in the other videos I'll show you how it, it can actually be used it's really powerful um, but it'll basically cut out all that little thing. And the cool thing is that it adds a, it adds a little like spine thing. So you actually move it and add add to it, bend it. Um, you can basically move it to wherever you want and do the same thing. Cut it out or add. So right now I'm just moving it to where I think um, will be better. I'm just, I'm just doing this just so um, it just seats on, sits on top. Um, I mean, honestly, you could have just um, saved it like like it was, like without adding this little uh, weird shape would have worked just fine but I'm I just like having fun with this <clears throat> so I'm cutting it out I actually want to get rid of that little um little bridge thing in the back so I'm gonna go into expert mo mode hit on the STL that I want to edit Hit Edit Mesh. And try to delete that. Delete it, but it's going to leave a few holes. So I'm going to go back in there, select it again, close holes, and bam. One solid mesh. That's it. Just hit... Um, Okay, you're done, and it'll be in the, the folder. And now you just print. That's it.